Personally, uh, I've always um, had a rather Henry Crawford, you know, the character in uh, Mansfield Park view, that I've, I've always very fancied myself as a bishop, and I must <laughs> say this in the presence of all, you know, I, I think, you know, uh, um, and if it were not for, for, a, for a cruel want of faith, I think I would uh, make, <laughs> <laughs> make a damn good bishop. And there, as people say, these can. days... It... My spleen isn't really big enough to, to explode with all the <laughs> splenetic juices of fury that uh, <laughs> drive me when I consider this, but the real key word that triggers my, my rage is the word energy. Mm -hmm. When people start talking about it in terms of negative or positive types, for instance, very negative energy here. Yes. What are you talking about? <laughs> what do you mean? You know, I mean, let's think about what does energy mean? Wait, 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 you know what it means. Mm -hmm. You know, energy from petrol when it's burnt and moves a car and makes it moves like this. And you know, this room has positive energy. Well, where the f is it going then? I mean, <laughs> you know, it's not moving. You know, it is, it's covering up such. Such woolly thinking, such pathetic nonsense. Mm. I mean, the whole uh, astrology, I mean, there's a... Mm. And most people will say of astrology, most of this, oh, it's harmless fun, mm. isn't it? Mm. And I should say, probably for 80% of the cases, it probably is harmless fun. But uh, there's a strong way in which it isn't harmless one. One, because it's so anti-science. Mm. You know, you will hear things like saying, science doesn't know everything. Well, of course science doesn't know everything. But be because science doesn't know everything, it doesn't mean science knows nothing. Mm -hmm. Science knows enough for us to be watched by a few million people now on television, mm -hmm. for these lights to be working, mm -hmm. you know, for quite extraordinary miracles to have taken place in terms of the harnessing of the physical world and our, and our dim approaches towards understanding it. And as mm -hmm. Wittgenstein quite rightly said, when we understand every single secret of the universe, there will still be left the eternal mystery of the human heart. So you're not denying a sort of spiritual level it, it, We it, are at all. An, an entirely spiritual people, of course we are. I mean, mm. the things that most exercises, I would say, for most of our lives are spiritual matters. That's to say, matters towards our set of our sense of self, whether our love and hate and anger and fear and desperation and all those things which are spiritual. But the answers to them are to use our whole body. If you, you know, a lot of these you know, alternative medicine people call themselves holistic but, uh, and say because it's the whole approach. Well, if it's the whole approach, then let it be the mind as well. Use logic, use sense. You, you know, use the, the incredible five wits you were, you were given. But perhaps, you know, we should believe in Adam and Eve. Um, geneticists have established that every woman in the world shares a single female ancestor who lived 150,000 years ago. Scientists do actually call her Eve, and every man shares a single male ancestor dubbed Adam. It's also been established, however, that Adam was born 80,000 years after Eve. So the world before him was one of heavy to industrial strength lesbianism, one assumes. <laughs> Um, now, the first question goes to Alan. On, on the subject of, uh, of biblical text and examples to why you can't uh, do certain things with your body that you wish to, I, I, I find that um, absolutely absurd. I think uh, uh, I've always been extremely uncomfortable with the idea in any society uh, that, that belief is based on, on uh, revealed truth, that's to say, on, on a text like a Bible or a Quran or whatever it is. It seems to me that the, the, the greatness of our culture, for all its incredible faults, is that we have grown up on the Greek ideal of discovering the truth, discovering by looking around us, by empirical experiment, by uh, the combination of the experience of generations of ancestors who have, who have uh, contributed to us some knowledge of the way the world works and, and so on. And uh, to have that snatched away and to be told what to think by a book However great it may be in places, this is a book that says you can sell your daughter into slavery. It's a book that bans menstruating women from within miles of temples. The fact that it also says that for one man to lie with another is an abomination is no more made relevant or important than the fact that you can't eat shell shellfish. It's certainly true that there are dozens of religions in world mythology that have had visits by wise men, kings who've killed children to stop the new king being born. There's a great deal in Christianity that is traditional. And however wonderful people think the story is, it's frankly not original. It was indeed, there's a Teutonic, Celtic and pagan view that if you've survived the winter solstice on the 21st of December, you have a feast to celebrate. But also, there was the Roman god. Was it Saturnalia? Was there was the Saturnalia, it was also at that time of year, but there was Mithras. Just the two of them were there? Well... <laughs> There are amazing things claimed about Mithras, and I'll read you some of them. He was a saviour, Mithras, sent to earth to live as a mortal, through whom it was possible for sinners to be reborn into immortal life. He died for our sins, but came back to life the following Sunday. He was born of a virgin on December the 25th in a manger, or perhaps a cave, attended by shepherds, and became known as the light of the world. 
He had 12 disciples with whom he shared a last meal before dying. His devotees symbolically consumed the flesh and blood of him. Because Mithras was a sun god, he was worshipped on Sundays. Is he a tribute band? <laughs> <laughs> He's often depicted with a halo around his head. Oh. And Mithraists gave each other gifts on December the 25th. The leader of the religion was called the Papa, and their HQ was on Vatican Hill in Rome. And you're not you're kind of writing off the chance that this was just a massive coincidence. <laughs> yeah, I almost wanted once to, 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 to publish a self-help book saying how to be happy uh, um, by Stephen Fry, guaranteed success. And, um, and, and the people buy this huge book, and it's all blank pages, and the first page would just say, stop feeling sorry for yourself and you will be happy. Uh, use the rest of the book to, to write down your interesting thoughts and drawings, and that, that's what the book would be, and it would be true. Um, and it sounds like, oh, that's so simple, because it's not simple to stop feeling sorry for yourself. It's bloody hard, because we do feel sorry for ourselves. It's what Genesis is all about. The book of the Bible, not the rock group. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh... Maybe, I don't know, maybe, <laughs> maybe the, the rock group is as well. Faith always comes up in your books. Yes. It's generally traditional or conventional religious faiths. <laughs> Occasionally it's to do with dolphins and crystals and what have you and ley lines. Is faith important to you? Do you think it's important to humanity as a whole? Yes, I do. I think it's very important. I mean, I think faith in each other is much harder than faith in God or faith in crystals. I very rarely have faith in God. Occasionally have little spasms of it, but they go away. I think hard enough about it. And I never have faith in... I mean, I'm incandescent with rage at the idea of horoscopes and of crystals and of the nonsense of new age or indeed even more pseudoscientific things self-help and the whole culture of searching for answers when for me as someone brought up in a tradition of western unashamed western tradition of music and poetry and philosophy all those answers are there in the work that has been done by humanity before us in literature in art in science in all the marvels that that have created this moment now instead of people looking away. The image to me which Ted mentions in the book is gold does exist and for gold say truth, say the answer, say love, say justice, say anything it does exist but the only way in this world you can achieve gold is to be incredibly intelligent about geology, to learn what mankind has learned, to learn where it might lie, and then break your fingers and blister your skin in digging for it, and then sweat and sweat in a forge and smelt it, and you will have gold. But you will never have it by closing your eyes and wishing for it. No angel will lean out of the bar of heaven and drop down sheets of gold for you. And we live in a society in which people believe they will. But the real answer that there is gold, and that all you have to do is try and understand the world enough to get down into the muck of it, and you will have it. You will have truth, you will have justice, you will have understanding, but not by wishing for it. Uh, each week on this program, I invite a special guest to tell us what they would do if they were God. So what sort of God do you think you might make? I, I'd like to think that I would be a, a caring, compassionate God, mm. uh, but with a strange and possibly unpleasant streak of vengeful wrath. All oh, right. <laughs> uh, but you would never know when. <laughs> I would be, so in that sense, I'd, yeah. be, I'd be capricious. It would be on a whim. You yeah. wouldn't know which day. Oh. Uh, and I've got a big, big jam jar full of locusts. Yes. Um, Who would you create first, woman or man? Ah. Um. <laughs> I say 50 50, Hugh. Yeah. <laughs> but then I, I see pitfalls either way. Yes. Um, All right. Well, but no. see, the other thing, the other problem I have yeah. uh, is that uh, being an atheist. Mm. <laughs> It's a, as regards to this whole exercise, it holds me yeah. back a bit. Unless yes. I'm going to appear in people's visions and tell them that I don't exist. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be confusing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, English language is like London. It is every time we speak, it is a mongrel mouthful, whether we know it or not, of Chaucer and Milton and Dryden and Pope, Shakespeare and Dickens and American South Central and, and ghetto rap and yeah. Chicago and Australian convict talk and legal and naval and military. Every phrase we utter is an equivalent of London. It's, it's both vulgar and processional. It's both grand and squalid. And, and that is exactly what human beings are, it seems to me. It's both animal and it's noble. There is no, absolutely no monopoly on... on beauty and truth in, in religion. That's what religion has become, a feeble and anemic uh, nonsense, because we understood that the fire was within us. It was not in some idol on an altar, whether it was a gold cross or whether it was a Buddha or anything else, that we have it. 
The fault is in our stars, but also the glory is, is in us, not in our stars. The glory, anything, we take credit for what is great about man, and we take blame for what is dreadful about man. We neither grovel or apologize at the feet of a god, or are so infantile as to project the idea that we once had a father as human beings, and we therefore should have a divine one too. We have to grow up. Are you saying that God doesn't exist?